there are times like you come in on a Sunday morning, early in the morning when no one's in and it's quiet and you actually get to look up at the ceiling. Just the artwork itself and, and what went into building this place, it must have been spectacular. The story of how Long Island University came to play the Brooklyn Paramount Theater began long before a ball was ever bounced or a basket ever scored under its gilded canopy. November 24th, 1928, a Thursday, the Brooklyn Paramount opened and according to the newspapers, 200,000 people came in one week alone to this theater. Back before every home had three televisions and every desk a computer, residents of Brooklyn came to the Paramount for their entertainment, and they were rarely at a loss for star power. Ethel Merman, Bob Hope, Bing Crosby, Rudy Valley, Burns and Allen, Duke Ellington, Charlie Parker, Dizzy Gillespie, Buddy Rich, Ella Fitzgerald, Sarah Vaughan. While fans of movies and music flocked to the Paramount, fans of basketball in Brooklyn in the 30s and 40s fell in love with the Blackbirds and their pioneering coach, Claire B. A place like LIU, this is one of the schools that started it all. This is one of the schools that was always in the NIT when there was no NCAA tournament, that they were in the old garden, bringing the pack into place and the smoke would be up to the roof and you know, you were looking through the way it was in the old days. In 1935-36, we won 43 consecutive games LIU was a mecca for college basketball. In 1951, a point-shaving scandal involving Long Island and several other New York area schools shook college basketball to its core and grounded the Blackbirds. When they returned to the court in 1957, they needed a new home far away from the gamblers that infested Madison Square Garden. They chose to turn the Brooklyn Paramount into their new home court, and suddenly basketball fans had something other than hoops to look at and listen to. Before he passed away this year, Eddie Layton would be here playing the organ, the original organ from when it was the Paramount Theater, one of the biggest uh, pipe organs left in the country. And he would sit around and, and play requests after, you know, you could say to him, somewhere over the rainbow, and he would sit down and bang it out. I remember some great plays where players coming down on a fast break, like Luke the Green had to curl around the poles. This was the mini garden, and it brought together people from the community who came out to cheer for the Blackbirds. Next fall, Long Island will open a brand new arena with all the amenities their former home lacked, but little of the charm of the once great theater. No one is quite sure what will happen to the Paramount, but they all hope it remains, as always, a living part of Brooklyn and college basketball history. We live in a throwaway culture. We dispose of our razor blades, our heroes, our memories. And as a result, we forget our most important legacies. A building like this is more than just nuts and bolts, pillars, posts and lintels. It's, it's people, it's, it's heroes, it's winners, it's losers. When you get 10 guys playing Division I basketball, you can play it anywhere and it's going to be a good game, a competitive game, but when you can put it in an environment like this, it just makes it something really special.